What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're sitting here with Jeff. What's up guys? One of the owners of Antler Grow. Right now, we're currently down in Florida. We're sitting in a camper because it's extremely hot outside. So we wanted to bring this video to you guys about mineral for deer, being that we have the man here. And we're gonna talk about some Antler Grow, mineral for deer, a little bit of land management type of stuff. And Jeff's also gonna explain a little bit uh, in the beginning on how they started the company, what, 17? 17, 17 years ago. 17 years ago now. Was when we started, Yep. we went public three years ago. Right, it's, so it's only been three years. To, to the, the public, public yes. But they've been using it and testing it. Right now we're literally sitting on 3,000 acres of yep. property that uh, they you know put food plots in, manage, and, and yep. all that types of stuff. So hope you guys follow along and we're gonna uh, let Jeff take over for a minute and we'll jump back and forth. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Dave. I mean, it's been fun the last few years having you and, you know, bouncing ideas off each other and learning from each other, you know, because mm -hmm. no matter how big or how small, no matter what, no matter who it is, whether you're five years old or 50 years old, you can learn from something from everybody. Oh, yeah. You know, and you might see something but doesn't comprehend, and then all of a sudden somebody says, oh, my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah. But we'll it, call each other all the time. Absolutely. And bounce ideas off. Absolutely. And that's, that's what makes failure is what leads you to success mm -hmm. you know and that's what started the company you know we failed so many times everything we did we did everything like everybody else does people forget we're a consumer you know we consume everything from food to eating to drinking to everything you could think of well you get to the hunting industry it's overrun right with junk yeah you know and there's some great companies out there you're not here to slander anybody you're just here to tell people what we found in our own layman's terms we're regular people we're no different than anybody else what's overrun with stuff that there's no evidence that it works no scientific there's, evidence there's no data there's no, no there's no anything it's sales yeah, it's all boiled down to yeah, sales. sales it's money you know you follow the money that's it you know we kept this a secret for so many years because we didn't want anybody to know we were doing mm -hmm. you know now now we're growing 200 inches you know we're in florida yeah but when you're growing 150s 160s in south florida you start right. to you start to go hey what, what the heck's going yeah, on something's here? You know? working here something's working here and you know we try everything that's on the market i mean we throw corn we do everything every kind of mineral supplement whatever you can think of but it all boils down to nutrition through green and growing plants. It's already there. It's already there. It's already there. So all we started doing was enhancing the plants that the deer are eating naturally, whether it be food plots, which is you know natural browse that we create, right. crops, yep. or natural browse that they're walking through nipping all the time. And we preach natural browse. You know that of all people. Yeah. Um, you know there's some good studies out there. You know that show you these things, and it's public knowledge. Yeah. You know we don't try and beat a dead horse and say this is what we got to do. This everybody has their own opinion. Yep. That's perfectly fine and the study we're referring to here is from mississippi mississippi state mississippi, mississippi state, state. Did, a, did a great study they took deer from three different parts of the state and from poor soil great soil and mediocre soil and they put these three different deer herds in different pens but they fed them all the fed them all the same diet nutrition not not stuff you pour in the ground and all that stuff and in two years time all three deer were the exact same in body weights and in animal development, the doe lacked, everything was the exact same. I mean, the fawns were healthier, everything just thrived. Well, it all boiled down to a nutritious diet right. through green and growing plants. Not something you dump on the ground. No. Supplemental feeding is for pen deer. You know, that's for, great for pen deer. I mean, we supplemental feed in the hard times. People do it all the time everywhere all throughout the country. There's nothing wrong with it. We're not saying it's bad, but if you want to take it to the next level, you know, mm -hmm. that to grow deer and attract deer, as naturally as you could possibly do, enhance what's already there, whether it be a food plot or whatever, because you're adding the nutrients to that plant that the soil's lacking. You can't give it to, you can't give it to the plant. Yep. You know, the sun provides photosynthesis, does all that, you know, which it gives the vitamins to the plants, while the soil gives the minerals to the plant. So the deer is getting its full vitamins, mineral, diet, the whole enchilada through what it's eating every day. And we, you know, we say all the time that deer eat four to six pounds of green and growing plants a day. Right. That's a lot of tonnage. It is. So if you have 10 deer, that's 40, 60 pounds a day. Right. A day. A day. You know, so you think you're honestly going to be able to enhance anything by putting a pile of stuff out there. Well, that's the thing. You, you dump something on the ground. Let's say, just say you have 100 acres. Yeah. You dump something on a, a three-foot circle. How many deer are actually really going to benefit from that when they when they eat five, six, seven pounds of something else? Of, if you can get the nutrients through the green and growing plants, now you're benefiting. Right. Not saying that you're not doing any good here, but you're not benefiting. Yeah. You know, if you want to take pictures, throw it on the ground. That's great. Yeah. You don't trade them all down. Yeah. Model. You can great pictures. Yeah. You know, but if you're trying to enhance your area, attract more deer, hold more deer, enhance 
what's already there, the natural browse, the food plots, all that, then spray it. Yeah. You know, it's that's the only way we've been able to do it, no matter where we are in the country, no matter where we are. I mean, you go to places, uh, we just been in Ohio, mm-hmm. you go to a sprayed field, you know, they got feeders, corn, all that stuff, which that's fine. But they spray the fields, and they spray the browse, they have more deer there on those areas than they do that's not sprayed. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're side by side by side. Nothing's changed except for the one thing that's right. spray. Right. You know? Well, real quick, we had a comment yesterday that somebody said, you know, this would never work, you know, Antler Grow, referring to Antler Grow, in never, Ohio. And it would never work in Ohio because they have too much corn. Too much corn. Well, corn is not nutrition. It's ice cream. It's ice cream. Just like I, I replied to him and told him. I would love to eat ice cream. Yeah, I would love to eat ice cream. You know, it's just like corn. You dump corn out, deer are obviously going to eat it. Yes. It's a great attractant. But yes. as far as nu- nutrition goes, it's nothing there other than some, some fat, a little bit. Carbs. Carbs. And very small bits of protein, right. all that, you know, all that. But digestible protein is what we talk about. Yeah. More sticks to the ribs. Right. Which puts body weight on. And if the body is healthy, then antlers are going to develop they're going to be healthier and all that they're going to be bigger yeah. you know uh, an, a beer is very unique because it can hold the nutrients for well, long next, periods next of time year. and benefit the following year mm-hmm. you know so if you can keep that beer healthy up on its body weight even though the ruddy goes down so many pounds and all that you know from running around but as soon as he gets done doing that he's right back on the nutritious diet because he's already been on it you know it's it's like it's going through the rut would be like let's go on cheat week we're on, yeah. a, we're on a diet you know we take a week yeah. off out and eat ice cream every day mm-hmm. You know, okay, now I'm gonna go back on the diet. Did you hurt anything? No, because right. all the nutrition is still there. You're still doing it, but it's just it's feeling yeah. it feels good. Yep. You know, and that's the that's what we talk about nutrition. Mm-hmm. It's not for everybody. No, it's not. But it doesn't matter if you have five acres, five hundred acres, or five billion acres. You can enhance what's there, whether it's owned, leased, doesn't matter. Yeah. Because this is leased land. This is three thousand acre leased yeah, land. Three thousand acres. And we do everything. I mean, you know, there's twenty members on this property, mm-hmm. and this whole thing is set up so that. You can see on layman's terms, because most people in the country have 40s and 80s and 120s, 150s. Well, that's how this property is divided up. Everybody does their own thing. I mean, you see it firsthand. Yeah. Everybody believes this, this, and this. But one thing they all have is food plots that are sprayed. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them, because they know that's what's going to do that. Right. Now they might go throw a corn or do this. We had a guy go dump some stuff on his corn the other day, and the deer wouldn't even go near it. Yeah, I don't remember the name of it, but he, yes. he literally came. We were sitting there by the campfire. And he came over and said, oh, yeah, it was his daughter or something, wasn't it? Yes. Or something. He, he sprinkled, went to the store, bought this buck something, sprinkled it on the ground, and the deer came to it, and they, they, as soon as they came to it and smelled it, looked at it or whatever, they ran off. It's foreign. Yeah, it's foreign. It's foreign. You know, and that's the thing about antler grow. It's not foreign. Yeah. It's nutrition through plants. Right. You know, the sticker that's on it is different than anybody in the, in the country, whether in the agriculture, which we do, the home and garden that we do, or the hunting. And the hunting... It's so potent that you have the same amount of minerals stuck to the outside of the plant as your plant absorbs. So you're benefiting the plant and the animal. I mean, just think of every every bite as a mineral lick. Mm-hmm. Every single one. Yeah. You know, is it the same as what you pour in the ground? Absolutely not. Yeah. Because if you didn't put salt and in, in attract and all other kind of stuff, minerals bitter. They're not mm-hmm. going to eat it. Right. But when you put that on the plant, it's normal. It's normal to them. They just know it's more nutritious and they want more of it. Mm-hmm. So it's attractive that way. Now to answer this question, because I know somebody's going to say, well, if you plant a food plot, they're going to eat it anyway. Correct. Absolutely they are. They will. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Well, so what's the difference if you just plant a food plot and then you have another food plot or you take the same food plot and then spray? Get down to basics. You plant a food plot. First thing you do is soil test. Yep. Okay. You get your pH right. Then you're, when you get that ag license, you know, that, that light, that, that test back is going to tell you what kind of fertilizers you use, all that, this mm-hmm. and that, right? Now, each plant uses different nutrients right. out of the soil. Each plant uses different fertilizers, right? Mm-hmm. Some, you know, the cereal grains, all that, your greens, all that, they're like high nitrogen, yep. low phosphorus, potash. And then some of them, you know, nitrogen fixing, but that's, you know, most people know all this, but some don't. But when you spray that, you're giving it the nutrients that it's lacking, okay? If you plant the same thing every single year, which most of us are guilty of, turnips, brassicas, you know, some greens, uh, rye oats, wheat, same spot every year, clover. Good example, clover. You got a perennial clover. That clover has been sitting there for three, four, five years. We've talked to a guy the other day for nine years yeah. and wonder why it was going down. Right. Seven, seven or nine years, I forget, because you get so many conversations, but was wondering why it was down. Well, one, it's one, it's life, it's life, it's life expectancy, it's run that. Two, there's no more nutrients in the soil to give to the plant. Right, then sucked it all out. That's why you rotate crops. You know, a lot of guys, when they go plant your first food plot, the best thing to do is plant a cereal grain, rye oats, wheat, something like that for your right. first food plot. Because what happens is you're only pulling certain nutrients out 
but in the, when you when they die off all that, you're getting a composting stage, you're adding back to it. If you can't take something out if you've put nothing in. Right. Same thing with a plant. You know, so the plant, if you're adding those nutrients to it, you're gonna be more palatable, more attractive. Because I can tell you millions of people in this country have planted food plots and totally failed. No, oh, yeah. Number one is because of pH. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing. But even when the pH is right on other stuff, it's not as attractive as it could be because it's not having nutrients to thrive. You'll see st uh, stunted growth on plants. We were at a 24,000 acre plantation a few weeks ago on our way back from Ohio. Yep. And we went in there and they had sorghum that was this tall, this tall. We have a soil test going off right now. I don't need to do a soil test. They need to pave the whole place over mm -hmm. and put condos up. I'm kidding when I say that, but there's no nutrients in the soil. Yeah, well we grew, I did a pH and did all the nutrients and the damn to grow and all this other stuff, we had 15 foot sorghum. Yes, it's huge. Huge. It's huge. And it makes great walls. Yeah. And it's great composting. It's great for green manure, you know, adding stuff back in and all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyways, on this 24 thousand acre track, it's a hunting plantation, you know, pay to hunt. And, uh, you know, we do some consulting and land management stuff and all that and trying to help them on their what they need to take it to the next level. You know, because when clients are paying top dollar, they want to see nice yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know, besides the lodge and all that, they want to see a beautiful food plot. They, they want to see a, a postcard TV in their mind, how they sit, how they look. Turkey hunting, quail hunting, pheasant hunting, deer hunting, whatever it might be. They, they have this picture in their mind. Right. They fly a thousand miles to go look at it. And pay three, four, five thousand dollars. A hunt. Yep. And uh, so anyways... We preach natural browse. We went in there, I said, I bush hog between all these pine trees and against wood edges. He said he's never shot a mature deer on a food plot. I said, well, the whole deal with a food plot is to have it more attractive than anything else that's in the woods. That's why you do it. Mm -hmm. It's a hunting spot. You're, you're, you're gonna attract deer, grow deer, shoot deer. Right. That's the whole yeah. life cycle. So if you can do all those stages, what you gotta start off with stage one, that's the nutrition side. Mm -hmm. To attract, to hold, to grow, so you can shoot. Yep, straight down to the soil sample. Soil always, sample always starts there. Always starts with soil sample, and then the nutrition and all that. But the cool thing about antler grow is you can add a lot of those nutrients directly to the plant that the soil is lacking. Right. That is what changes the whole game, no matter where you are in the country. And it doesn't do anything to the soil. So when Does you add it. it, when you add it to the plants, the leaves yes. absorb it. So you know, like on your brassicas, they're not going to grow back. But when that deer takes a bite of that, he just got off a whole yes pound full of uh, mineral. What we, exactly, what we have found is a lot of cases, not every case, you know, everybody has their own, a lot of cases, what happens is when that deer is healthy, you're able to get more days because they start getting bone back, you know, going to the velvet stage earlier mm -hmm. because they're healthy. You know, when it, the reason that the antlers fall off is because the new ones are pushing out, right? Yep. Well, there's so many days, goes through a little lax period, all that kind of stuff, but the nutrients in the body is what makes everything go. So if you can get a few extra days and get an extra eighth inch a day, you know, because of nutrition, yeah. you know, over that certain growing period of the antlers, huge, 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 huge. You get an extra 10, 15, 20 inches a year. Absolutely. On it. And there's nothing magic. No. There's nothing magic. You can't dump something on the ground, spray no. it, and all of a sudden you got big deer in six months. No. You know, that's the mentality that some people have. Yes. They go, like we talked earlier, you go to the store, people buy something and just dump it on the ground, think they're benefiting. Yes. And all of a sudden they see big, they see big deer, but they didn't grow the big deer in six months. It just doesn't work that way. So it takes years and years and years and years. I think of throwing stuff on the ground, like bought a, buying a lottery ticket. Yeah. One out of a billion is going to get lucky. Right. And it's not that the mineral did it or whatever they dumped on the ground did it. It's they were in the right place at the right time. Yep. Yeah. Now you think of nutrition, food plots, natural browse, crops, and all that, like a 401k. You're putting in every single day, every single day, every single day. You don't realize it. What you're doing, after so much time, you're looking, you're like, holy smokes, look what I got. Right. Now that is a slow process. Yeah. Yes. But birthdays. Every yes. birthday. Bir birthdays what grows. Yeah. Birthdays, nutrition, and we can't control genetics. Right. No matter who says we can, we can't. We're not a deer pen. You know, you got a controlled environment. You could buy semen from this state, from that state. Get you know, get all that. To create your own gene, your own everything. You're talking about wild deer that 99.9% .9 of us hunt. Right. You know, and I love free range. Yep. I got nothing against high fence. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of stuff with high fence, but they get the nutrition through the stuff that they grow for the deer because the deer don't sit there and eat six, seven pounds of 
stuff out of the trough feeder every day. Well, what does that deer do? He browses around inside that pen. Yeah. They travel majority of the day, a lot of times of the day, and they bite here, bite there, bite there. That's natural. As, as they browse. Yep. You know, so. Yeah, the pen, they're working solely off genetics. Yeah. Genetics. Genetics, genetics, genetics. We're working off age and nutrition. Yeah. The two things that we can control. Mm -hmm. And they're wild deer, so it's hard to benefit yes. all the deer. Yes. You know what I mean? It, you're, it's, they're wild. They can go anywhere. They can be three miles down the road. Yeah. You know, so it just takes a lot of work and, you know, a lot of uh lot It of does. Like but the cool thing is about this is you know, there's no batteries. Nope, no batteries. Doesn't mold, doesn't rot. You know, it doesn't spook anything. No, doesn't spook anything. There's no red flag saying, hey, I'm over here because there's a pile there in front right. of me. You know, they just walk through there naturally. They just, when they walk through there the first time, they're like, whatever that was over there, I want more, more because that yeah. felt good in my body. Yep. You know, yep. it's like when you drink a big juice or something, you know, you just feel it going through your veins. You're just mm -hmm. like, oh man, I feel healthy today. Exactly. You yeah. know, and they're just, you're the same way. You know, too. They live by their stomachs, they live by safety. If you can get something to where it benefits your stomach and attract them that way mm -hmm. and have the safest place around, you're going to have the deer. Exactly. Well, guys, we're going to wrap this video up. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. And uh, thanks. Yep, for sure. See you guys. Be good, guys.